Mm. We'll forgive you this just once. Thank you. Thank you. Just make Rescinda the new co-host. Okay. <laughs> yeah. She's this, ready. She's five minutes early. <laughs> at this point, even with our last few guests, there's always like five minutes where I'm like, sorry, Melissa's just running a little behind. <laughs> well, at least you know I know Melissa. So yeah, I <laughs> <that's true. laughs> yeah, Chrisinda's actually well prepared. She's like, no, no, Jake, you're wrong. She had I'm like late. She had like discussion notes for just waiting for you to like update your computer, <laughs> update the app. Uh. Christina has joined our Google calendar for the pod. She's like, <laughs> Melissa's late again. Okay. Yeah. I was 10 minutes late for service today, so I cannot give anyone a hard time. So, <laughs> okay. Thank you for making me feel better. Yes. Thank <laughs> you for that. I Anytime. appreciate it. Anytime. Oh, here we are. Here we are. Another week. Another week, another dollar. Yeah. Uh, needless do to you say, want to? Needless to say, we got a lot to talk about. Needless to say. Do you want to talk about? Because you've mentioned your family member on the pod, I think multiple times. Oh, okay. Yes. No, my my uncle did pass away. Okay. Yes. Sorry to hear that. Thank you. Kind of abrupt. Oh. Uh huh. Abrupt. Yes. Um. So just in case anyone listening ends up having a situation where I feel like they could give advice or anything. I mean, you can't give advice once someone's passed away, I realize, but <laughs> there's no advice to be had at this point. Um, no, it was weird because my mom, you know, I'm sure there's many people that are in a caretaking situation and, you know, she made sure all of his medications were taken care of and all that type of stuff. And he was on some pretty serious medication. Um, but when you, apparently, when you put someone into an assisted facility, they will not allow that person to have more than a certain amount of types of medications, right? Mm -hmm. It'd be, you know, you can be on baby aspirin and you can be on Tylenol PM maybe. But as far as like mega, you know, med mega medications, you can't be on as many as he was on, according to them. Gotcha. He was fine when he was with my parents, but they took him off one of them. That was like the one that was the hardest for my mom to get him to be approved to be on. They took him off that one first and they didn't wean him off of it. They just took um. him. Off. And so he literally spiraled, I feel like, since that happened. He wasn't eating he could not feed himself like he would hold the food and like just it would fall down and he wouldn't know what was going on just a lot of cognitive things that were not going well and so then recently they were like told my mom you know they called my mom the day before yesterday and said that he was not doing well that he was dying and he had stopped eating and my mom just saw him on Saturday and then they called, they got ready to leave. And then they called within the hour and they were like, he passed away. Oh my God. So, you know, I don't know if that's normal. You know, my mom, my mom is actually like, I'm just going to go talk to a lawyer just in case, because, you know, they're like, oh, we took him off this medication that he's been taking for years and we took him off cold Turkey and suddenly, you know, well, he's passed away. It's kind of like, I don't think she's going to be like, I'm going to sue you. I think she's going simply to be like, is this okay? Yeah. You know, is this normal? So if anyone's had a similar experience, please do DM. Yeah. Well, sorry so, to hear. Yeah. Just crazy, but it's okay. He will be, you know, it'll be better later. You know, he'll yeah. be, this is the best case scenario for him and the way his life was. So my mom's, finding peace in that you know any caretaker out there I feel like they've got it so rough I mean like it's got to be one of the most brutal things you know for your sibling or a parent to like take care of them and then slowly go through that process yeah you know, heart goes about, out to all yeah. of them we talked about him because he's the vet right the Vietnam yes yeah. yeah he was a Vietnam vet he had a lot of PTSD he had unresolved issues from that yeah. You know, and he he tried to self-medicate sometimes to try to get through depression and different things. You know, but in the end, my mom, my mom took care of my grandma until she passed away and my uncle till he passed away now. Mm. So, you know, it's just her and my uncle Ed now. 
And that's another subject for, for another... never going to talk about it day. <laughs> that's for our Patreon. <laughs> yeah, that's for the Patreon. Yeah. Go ahead and join our Patreon and you might hear about that <laughs> little gem of a human. Oh my God. But taking us to today and our guest. Here we are today. Here we are with today. Our lovely guests. Yes, and you had a good morning, Jake. Let's not forget, Jake is also oh. here. You know, Jake. <laughs> yeah, just work, working. Uh, this is okay. like a midday pod. This is like not our normal pod time. Right. So it I is kind of different. Ran home, uh, and then I'm gonna go back to work after this. But okay, well, good for you putting the pod first. Somehow we manage. Somehow we manage. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, that actually is good. It's real clean. Okay, I just, I realized my, my microphone a little was a little bit loose. I just tightened it. Okay. That's better now. Okay. So who's our guest today? Okay. So our guest without further ado is Chrisinda and she is an incredible woman. There's nothing this woman can't do. This is not a joke. I'm not over. I'm not just saying that I'm not trying to hype. I am hyping her up. But as women know, we like to hype each other up. She does CrossFit. She is a runner. She ran the ran she ran the race in Portugal with Darren, who I know you talked about that with him. Mm -hmm. um, I think she has some a, things to say about it. Yes, she, Chrisinda she was like, "Okay, she Darren, didn't you like have done yeah. a little better on that one." Yeah, so we can we can get into that if if she wants. Yes, but anyway, sorry. Yeah. And she also is a phenomenal DIYer. And I don't mean putting wallpaper on the back of a chair. <laughs> I'm talking on another level. Like she could have her own HGTV show. Literally. I can't even get into her tile story in her upstairs bathroom. But if she wouldn't mind like just saying that story at some point, I love that story. I feel like it just shows if you put your mind to something, you can accomplish it. And I think that's why I wanted her to be on the show. Okay. Because that's like, that is literally her. She's like, no, I can do this myself. She gets it done. She gets it done. She's a woman that gets it done. That's going to be our title. Chrisinda gets it done. Chrisinda gets it done. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Chrisinda, please welcome. Oh my gosh. My head's not going to fit through the door when I leave. What's <laughs> up? But that intro. <laughs> Thank you. I, I have nothing. I, yeah. I got nothing. People are going to be disappointed after that. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine that um, the wallpaper in your room right now that you're in looking stunning that you did yourself. Uh, no, my mother-in-law, my fabulous mother-in-law. She is my partner in crime when it comes to all things wallpaper. Okay, well, so. shout out to mother-in-law. Yes. yes. So real quick on that. Did you wallpaper sections and then do a border around it? Almost like a um, I think I did the... This was COVID project. I did the, okay. the border first. I did the okay. border. I painted, I even painted it before I ordered the wallpaper, which I wouldn't advise. Um, but I lucked out that it matched. And I painted the ceiling to match it because I wanted a whole like, just we're in the sky, God. blue vibe, relax. So this was like the Zoom room during COVID. Mm -hmm. Yes. And thanks yes. for joining us on Zoom because you said you hate yes. Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's actually it's extremely triggered, you know, but she did it anyways. <laughs> Speaking of PTSD. Yeah, just sad. <laughs> I'm sure this will be way less awkward than some of my other Zoom encounters. Oh my word. Yes. So you're in, are you in the sunroom right now? You're not, you're upstairs in the day bedroom? Yeah, because um we currently have no furniture downstairs. So it's very echoey. So this was mm -hmm. uh, the least echoed room for me to do it. Oh, other than the closet, I could have been like armchair and done the closet, but that's well, very dark. I love that you're here. You look phenomenal. I'm so Thanks. excited about what you're going to talk about with us today. Okay. What are we going to talk about? <laughs> well, as you heard, we have about 45 questions. No. Okay. Sounds good. I think one of the things, even whether you're a man or a woman, you know, Jake did a race recently. He had to get his go to in gear uh -huh. and he did it. He succeeded. Yes. Congratulations, Jake. I listened to that episode yesterday in preparation for this. And I love, oh. I love hearing people's stories of like how it went how their feelings post race. Like it's, I love it. I love all the Thank details. You. Yeah. We talked about it in West Virginia afterwards mm -hmm. and, yeah. and you gave me props when I was like, no, it's just a stupid run. And you're like, no, it's great. But yeah. never, I hate when people like, put, I, what's just this. It was just a 5k. No, no, it's awesome. Yeah. 
I do feel like that is something that you're very good at. You know, if someone accomplishes something, it could even be something small. Uh You know, you're always like, don't make a small deal out of it. It is a big deal. Like, congratulate yourself. Do you feel like you try to incorporate a lot of that, even like with yourself and like trying to do these projects or trying to do these big runs? Do you feel like that's almost an internal dialogue that you use too? Oh, yeah. I mean, is it has it been lately that you've been hearing how like some people don't have internal dialogues? I've been like seeing this thing pop up where not everyone has one. And I could never relate to anything less. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, constant. Um, I mean, I think you guys would probably all agree, like life is mostly mental. Um, the framework which you know choose to view things. And sometimes it's harder to choose to view things in a certain way. Um, but it basically I think it's like you're constantly like tricking yourself or manipulating yourself and you know you're doing it um but it does work um and just kind of learning what works for you what motivates you um I know for me um feeling proud and like uh, accomplishing things and feeling happy and feeling good that kind of just propels me forward and makes me want to do more so being negative is like no no good I can't I don't live in that space because then I'm like, why? It's hopeless. It's pointless. Why try? Um, So I kind of, I kind of find any little reason to feel good about myself to propel me forward. (laughs) I like that. I like it. The the inner dialogue of positivity. Well, I don't want to be, you know, it's like a tough thing. You don't want to be like that toxic positivity person, you know, where they're just like Pollyanna about everything, Mm -hmm. Um, you know, trying to find like that balance. Um, But yeah, just trying to figure out like what motivates you personally and then just like leaning into that. And then the more you do that, I think um, it just becomes a well-worn path that is easier to do every time when you're like, OK, I'm kind of slipping mentally, you know, getting down. How do what works? What's worked in the past to keep me on the path, to keep me motivated towards whatever your goal is. And then it's easier to kind of like not get so far off track, I think, you know, just the more mm-hmm. make it a habit, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's true. Um, Do you feel like with your runs that there has been or anything, you know, like it could be, it could be running specific, Mm -hmm. but like, you know, has there been something where you feel like in life as a woman, no, no shade to our men listeners. I'm sure you can relate Jake. You know, sometimes there's those days you need just ice cream and sit in front of the TV, you know, we all know. We all know totally. what happens, okay? But like, is there a time where you were like, this is harder, like, this is testing my mental capability, like more maybe than like another time possible? Um, probably my 28 mile run the other week in the rain. <laughs> that probably, that was, that really? was great. Yes, I was like. I don't think start, I heard yes. about that you were doing oh. that one. Oh, it was a training run. So I think training, just training, training. Yes. But you know what? What were you, what were you training are? for? I'm actually in two weeks going to be doing a hundred K trail run in Moab, Utah. Wow. Um, yeah. So I'm just now wow. tapering. So, um, yeah, so I'm just coming off some weeks of some like high mileage and, um, I think what I always tell people is like, you know, I love to be encouraging if people want to sign up to do a race or something, obviously, and I'll give you like tips and what's worked for me, but I try not to convince people like to sign up for things because the training is 90% of the experience and I can't do the training for you. Only you can. And you're the one that has to like buy out time and scheduling and all these things. And you're the one that's going to be there by yourself doing the thing. I can't do it for you. So And there's nobody clapping for you when you finish a 28 mile run. Nobody cares. It's a midweek day. No one cares that you just did that, you know? And so you got to like find your reasons for why you're going to do this thing. And I will say the two weeks of rain that we had, I don't know if you guys had this, but we had like a solid two weeks of rain. I had like my highest highest mileage during that time. And I love sunshine. Um, I'd sooner run in 95 degree heat in the sun than dreary clouds and rain. And yeah, the 28 miler, like I was like, yeah, (laughs) I was questioning things, but I don't know. You just, I think for me, like with uh, something like that, um, you just break it down as smaller increments. And for me in the beginning part of that ignorance is bliss. I kind of just like, don't pay attention. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be out here for a while. 
and you just don't look like, oh, I'm only one mile in. Oh, I'm only two miles. <laughs> you mm-hmm. Don't even think about it. Like turn your watch around and you just yeah. move, you know, talk to a friend, listen to a good pod- podcast, um, yeah. music, yeah. and just like chip away at it. And don't start paying attention until you're over halfway. And then you can start being like, oh, well, now I'm 60% done. Now I'm 70% done. And, you know, kind of build on that momentum. Um, But yeah, that one was a rough one for me. I'm not going to lie. I was a little cranky. I was on the phone with my sister doing that. And she was so sweet and talked to me for like three hours and was a good support system. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like that's good advice. How would you motivate someone who, like for me, the the half marathon is like the thing. So I feel like I can show up for that, but I don't show up for the training part. Like I don't, like, I know uh, I'm going to get through the, I, I know I'm going to get through the half marathon. Yes. Like I know mm-hmm. even if I don't run again, I'm going to do it. Mm-hmm. So then it's really hard to get motivated. So I was doing like just one run a week to, to yeah. prepare and I would do like, I know I heard, I'm like, oh my goodness, he's going to get injured. <laughs> I was worried. <laughs> so is that, is it just the fear of getting hurt? No, it's lots of layers. Okay. So one. Everybody wants that feeling of race day, crossing the finish line and feeling super proud of yourself. And if you do cross that finish line, no matter what, no matter how you did it, you should feel proud. But I think the more work you put into it, like any goal in life, the more work you put into it, the bigger the reward, the greater the satisfaction, Mm -hmm. you know how much you sacrificed to get there. And that just compounds that feeling of like, just awesomeness when you cross the finish line. Like I could, like at this point, I could go like run a marathon without much training and yeah, it wouldn't be as much fun and I'd be fine. I probably could do it, but I know I wouldn't get the same amount of satisfaction and joy. Um, so I'd say that's one reason. Um, I think you, through training, I've learned through the years, like so much about myself personally and how I tick and how I work and just time for like meditation and pondering and um, the time being outside in nature. And I feel like all the things I've learned have been through the training process and I don't want to get injured. I'm getting older. <laughs> so all, the, all those things. Better. You should have known better that you were going to get a slap on the wrist with that one. <laughs> no, I knew. We're I all just, getting older. Yes, I like, needed to hear it. And I kind of just put my little shoes on and I just went for a little while. I don't know. I just ran. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, okay. <laughs> no, it's awesome. You, you did it. Like it's so, it is amazing. But, but it just doesn't totally count. <laughs> no, it does count. No, 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 no. I know. Okay. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, I love that. I love that you no, said good. that though. Like that the, the by the end only you know what you sacrificed to get to that point. Yeah, that's true. You know. So and that's also something that you could like meditate on as far as like what is my motivation to like do things, accomplish things, you know, like am I like for for me personally and me and Darren have talked about this a lot when he was doing his training for the race you guys did, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of it was like, he like, you know, like it might be late nights or like Jake, even when he was doing his, it isn't super convenient. Like I need to go do this. And we, I also need to eat dinner. I also need to get to a meeting tonight. Like there are all of these other things, but you just make it work whether it's convenient or not. And I do think the challenge mentally you could not come out the other side of that and not have had something change in your brain Mm -hmm. it's so much self-control of like no this is what I'm I have to do period and I think nowadays like over the last little bit for sure for me I'm sure it's different with everyone you know realizing like how much not just self-control but like self-discipline you know, are you lacking? Do you have it? What, what do we have work? What are we working with here for Darren? I think he has more self-discipline than maybe your average dude. I don't know, but you know, but I know that he continued to do it. He never stopped the training, even if he wasn't like super thrilled, even if I wasn't super thrilled that it was 10 o'clock at night. And I'm like, is he dead on the mountain eating (laughs) by a bear? Well, your steak's cold, you know, he still would continue And I found that to be, you know, very interesting, even as a bystander, as a watcher, you see people do that and you're like, okay, like what is making them tick? What is making them go back for more? If you want to say, you know, so 
I think that's interesting that point you brought out that it, it's gonna you have to find your own motivation and what is it what qualities lord knows I need to work on it for sure I mean like I I know that about myself definitely well and I think it's kind of like the practice makes perfect so like I'll tell you this Jake like my first marathon and training for that in some ways was the hardest because I had never bought out time for training before in my life. So it was adding a whole nother element that I never done. And it felt like it took so much coordinating and finagling of my schedule, you know? And then now that I've been doing this for a while, it just kind of like, you just fit it in. Like you just figure, you figure it out and you're like, oh, I can do this in between jobs or whatever. And I know that I like to do something in the fall on the race because then I'm training in the summer and it's late till nine o'clock at night. So I have like an extra five hours, four hours of daylight to train. You know, you kind of figure out your lifestyle and just you fit it in. And maybe sometimes it does then temporarily you have to whittle some things out, Um, maybe less TV watching, going to bed earlier, but you kind of get used to it and you just like fit it in. I don't know. No, it's true. You'd have to almost like stop being so obsessed with like getting Oasis tickets for one <laughs> hour a week. And you could be like a mega marathon runner, but you're just, you've got to get those tickets. Just obsessing over Oasis. Wild. <laughs> also supportive spouses. So shout out to you, Melissa and my husband, Brent are definitely a huge help. Like not, you know, the understanding and being supportive and maybe not making you feel guilty because like, oh, you're going to run again or you're doing this. Like yeah. that is definitely very helpful because then it's one less like factor you have to take into mind. Like, oh, I'm disappointing my spouse or whatever, you know? So that that's a huge role too. Chelsea's the same. Like she, like I work out in the mornings at six with her two, twice a week because oh, like, nice. it's not bad for me, but like, um, I wouldn't make it the priority that she does. And she wants me to be there. Um, That's really nice. I get, but also like if I carve out time for that, like training or running or anything, she'll like, she's only going to support it. So it's yeah. not like I have to worry about her, you know, worrying about how much I'm running. <laughs> See, I think Chelsea is like more so like the one week, right? You were like, yeah. I don't know. I should probably run five miles. And Chelsea's in the back, just like, go do it. <laughs> just run. Just get up go and do it. it. Like, come on. Yeah. You know, like she's kind of like a little bit of like the knife in the side in a good way. Like, she's, in a good way. and then she's also got like a lot of discipline, like where if she's like, this is bad for me, I'm not going to do this. She just like doesn't do it. Yeah. Or, I need to work out. I need to, you know, I need to do this for my mental health. I need to go walk every day. She yeah. just does it where I'm more like, this doesn't make me feel good. I should keep doing it and see if, <laughs> see if it stops hurting me. <laughs> yeah. I think we are kind of similar in that way because I'm like, like I, especially because I know how satisfying it was, like even like when Jake ran his race and like when Christinda does and we talk about it, you know, it's like these big goals, you know, you, you do feel like this massive amount of satisfaction but I definitely feel like there's that, those moments where I'm like, yeah, but I mean, like Emily in Paris is like dropping the new episode and I just like, can't deal. Like, I just can't. And Darren's like, okay, bye. You know, whereas I'm like, I'll give myself a pass. And I yeah. think maybe I need to not give myself a pass so much, you know, what do you or think? It's that in like, oh, sorry, I'll let. Christina. Oh no, I'm trying to think because I have my own Emily in Paris, you know, I mean, like we all have our things, you know? So I think, I don't know, do you maybe like the goal has to be important for you enough to like delay the Emily in Paris. So okay. maybe what's okay. a, a goal that's important to Darren might be different for you. So finding what motivates you. Like I always pick say like races or whatever, not necessarily based on like the smartest logistics that fit into my yeah. life, but like what gets me excited? Like, um, like emotionally driven where I think about it and I'm like, okay, I'm excited. I connect with this Weber because of the distance, the location, it's okay. on the location we're doing. And that helps carry me through the training. Whereas if I just, I don't know, pick one that I'm not connected to, I'm not gonna, I don't think I'm going to yeah. fall through on the training. I don't know. So right. you have to find that right goal that speaks to you, whatever it is. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. What were you going to say, Jake? Did you have a question or comment? Oh, no, I was just going to say like, um, we were just being Chelsea. We were just talking about workouts. And I said, I like, 
I think my favorite workout is when like you literally like can't get yourself off the floor. Like you're so gassed, yeah. but then I'm like, but I How can't do, do that. CrossFit. <laughs> well, that's what we do like a, we do like a hybrid with our trainer twice a week. So sometimes okay, so we'll do that. A, okay. Too. Gotcha. But I'll be like, no, I can't do that though. Cause I have to work. Like I have to like go to work after it. Mm. So it's like, I make an excuse right off the bat. Like I could work after it. Like, Oh, okay. go home, drink some water, make a smoothie and then go to work and I'd be fine. But I'll be like, no, I like that. But I don't want to do that to myself because of work X, X or Y or whatever. So saying what I like and then immediately giving myself a pass for not doing it. OK, we really got to work on this past situation. <laughs> it's hard, though, because also like you have to be balanced with it. Like you're supposed to have be having fun and joy, like relatively associated with these things. So if you mm -hmm. feel like you're always forcing yourself to do it, like I don't think that's good either. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I mean, I hate running early in the morning. Like that's never going to be me. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just not going to find any joy. I've done it. I hate it. I yeah. hate running the treadmill. I'm never going to do it. Um, so if I forced myself and be like, you need more self-discipline and this is when you have to do it. And then I hate it the whole time. I don't think that's good either. So yeah. if you know yourself that you don't want to do it at a certain time, I don't know. Work no, I'm, I'm saying work like, it's not about the early mornings. Like I want to do early mornings. Like I don't want to do anything after like four. What well, I meant you're, so you're early. Okay. So you're after four is my uh, early morning. So yeah. So <laughs> okay. If, okay. If that it's makes like, sense. if I'm going to run, I will, I would, I would rather run at like six o'clock in the morning than okay. at like four o'clock at night. Like okay. get, get up, yeah. just get it done. And then the rest of your day is, is good. Yeah. So it's, it's not about the early mornings as much as just the, like, um, having a reason why I can't do the thing. Even if I actually like, could. like, if I could just do what I enjoy to work out, I would just play soccer every day. Can you? Okay. No. Okay. So then it's not, like not possible. Not, not possible. possible. Okay. I didn't know if there was a, a crew up there that you can I need like 20 people. <laughs> oh, oh it takes that many. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say Kristen and I don't know what that even means. That sentence okay. is not resonating. <laughs> Play soccer every day. Like you mean like a like a group of guys running, running a group of guys. Yeah. And you're playing soccer like a game every morning. So that there's like this sport game. called soccer, and you've got it's football, right? Football. <laughs> football. And you've got a big group of people and it's a lot of running, but that, that's my favorite form of exercise. But that's not something you can just do whenever. Yeah. So. Well, it sounds like you might need to talk to your friends about this and let them know how they're not supporting you. Yeah. Because you clearly need 20 guys to step it up. Every yeah. day. Need a league. Yeah. 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 You need a league. I need a league. We can do a shout out next month for men's wellness also like <laughs> where are dudes at where are early morning soccer dudes at okay yeah. but yeah that's that's interesting okay so let me i had a couple other questions let me just sure. look at for a second um okay so i okay yes the running we we got that i love everything the, the little i feel like tips and pointers fantastic i love that okay so the next thing i wanted to ask was if you, okay, were you, back to running for one second, were you, and I think I've asked you this before, but I don't honestly remember, and I'm still very curious, a runner, like as a teenager? Not at all. Okay. So then the transition, I'd like to know how that occurred. So maybe I can help myself do it here in my <laughs> late, late 20s. My latest of You're 20s. 27, Matt. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not a super like exciting or romantic story by any means. Oh, yeah. Basically, we bought this house and it made me 30 minutes from the gym that we had been going to. And I wanted to like spend my extra time like painting and working on the house. And I didn't want to waste like an hour driving. Um, so I just was like, oh, well, I could just like put on sneakers and run out my door 10 minutes one way and then come back 10 minutes. And that's 20 minutes of exercise. Mm -hmm. And so I just did that for like a year or so. And then um, our mutual friend, Marissa, was already an avid runner and she had already run a marathon. And she was like, you could totally run a marathon. And I was like, I could totally not run a marathon. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but at the time, Brett and I would watch Biggest Loser every Tuesday night when we got home from meeting. We were obsessed. Mm -hmm. And back then, way, way back then, I remember they had would have the contestants, like the last ones, run like a marathon at the end of the season. 
And I remember thinking, well, if they can do it, I can do it. Right. You know, I'm in my twenties. Um, and so then I like found the easiest training schedule on the planet with the most minimal amount of running. And Mm -hmm. I did it and I ran a marathon. Then I was like, good, never have to do this ever again. Um, (laughs) but I did it bucket list. And then a year or two later, Avrielle was wanting to run her yes. first marathon. Okay, yeah. So she asked me to do it with her and I'm a sucker and don't like to say no to my friends. So I did it and then it went way better. Like I got faster without trying. Okay. And then I was like, wow, if I, if I apply myself and actually like work at this, maybe I could run Boston one day and qualify for Boston. Mm. Um, okay. So it wasn't even at that point you being like, I'm going to run a hundred miles. Like oh, it was no, a small goal, small, yeah. goal, small yeah. goal, small goal, but they were getting bigger every time. Yes. Yes. But to you personally, smaller, a small goal than yes. the next one was maybe a little bigger, but yes. to you, it felt like achievable. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I did a couple of marathons. I got into Boston, loved it. I just like trying something new, like new experiences. And yeah. then I was like, I'll try my first ultra. So I did the smallest ultra, a 50 K in Colorado went great. Yeah. So just kind of like building nice. and then being reinforced by positive experiences and just, I like doing new things. So okay. yeah, new goals. That seems doable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, this is in like 15 years. Yeah. This is yeah, taking 17 you years, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. so it took a while to like actually enjoy it. It was, and he didn't even like plan to enjoy it. You just planned no. to, to do it. Yeah. For, yeah. Try it. Mm-hmm. I love it. That's great. I do want you to tell Jake the story sidebar about the tile in the upstairs bathroom (laughs) I tell people this story as like that is like my holy grail story for people that are like and I wanted this and it's too expensive I I immediately I have this in the bag I'm like well my friend Lucinda (laughs) so just please tell that story unless you have any other things you feel like that would be good to tell people about our past subject please do say it Oh, I was thinking about this, um, yeah. not about the tile, but when you said like this month was about women's health and I didn't want to make um, the running topic too isolating because I know so many people, as they always like to tell me that they hate running. <laughs> <laughs> and as I always like to tell people, that's okay. Like you don't have to love it. Um, uh, I think as I've gotten older, as we all are getting older and we see our loved ones, our parents, our aunts, uncles, our grandparents get older. I have realized, especially in the past couple of years, how important our health is and the things we do now, how they're going to pay dividends, hopefully in a positive way, Mm -hmm. you know, 20, 30, 40 years from now. So whatever you enjoy doing physically, if it's soccer, if it's rowing, whatever it is, walking, walking is amazing. People underestimate the benefits of walking. Um, Whatever you enjoy, if you enjoy it, you're going to do it regularly. And if you're doing it consistently and regularly, it's going to benefit you for forever, forever, oh, mentally, cool. emotionally, physically. So find the thing that you connect with. Um, and it does not need to be running um, because it's going to benefit you now, but then years to come. So I don't know. My okay. little yeah, that's great. No, you're right. You're right. That's true. Jake, let's look ahead. Let's not give ourselves the past. We need to look 10 years down the line, 20 years down the line. No, it's true because we are getting older. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, um, yeah, even if you're I, not like injured or anything, you do feel it more. And yeah. but then also just to be in your 40s and still do stuff like is yeah, good. travel. Mm-hmm. Like, do you want to enjoy traveling? Um, I think that's huge to be physically mobile, to be able to go hiking and do all those things. And I think yeah. we take it for granted because we can kind of phone it in physically for a couple of decades, and we don't have to put forth that much effort, and we still get to do all those things. Yeah. Um, but then as you see people getting older and they're like, oh, I can't do that now. And I'm like, oh, you know, or even like if you've had a grandparent or something, I remember when my grandma was passing um, and getting older. Uh, I didn't realize like, if you can't, if you fall and you can't pick yourself off the floor, you have oh. to go to an assisted living. Something as simple mm-hmm. as that your heart might be okay and everything, but if you can't pick yourself off the floor, you can't live all alone. Well, yeah. like say for instance, in CrossFit, we do burpees all the time, all the live long day. If you're doing a burps and burpees a couple of times a week, you are practicing picking yourself up off the floor. Mm-hmm. And that if you're always consistently doing it, you'll be able to do it then into your 70s and 80s. Mm-hmm. Just something, a simple little thing to do now to keep doing. Our know? trainer, because um, we do burpees and stuff, but he 
has clients that are older that he just has them sit down and then get back up. Yeah. So he's just having them just get up off the floor. It's it's like for them, it's a workout, but it's also just getting them used to that motion yeah. as they get older, that if they fall, they can get themselves back up. Yeah. Well, now that just sounds adorable. Now it just sounds like you should be going there to see these cute older ones, just <laughs> given that they're all standing and sitting. <laughs> sounds so cute. <laughs> Okay, so now tell us the okay. tile story. Okay, We're sorry. ready. All right, I'll tell you. Okay, so I'm cursed with expensive taste. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I we were remodeling our bathroom. I had fallen in love with this tile from, I don't know, it was like Italy or something, gazillion dollars, whatever. Um, and uh, a year later, still like thinking about ideas for the bathroom. And I just couldn't move past this tile. I just loved it. I couldn't find anything that came close. And when I emotionally connect with, I don't know, textile. <laughs> I can't, I can't betray it, you know? Um, so she goes I, into Home Depot and she's looking at the on sale tile. They're like reaching for her and she's like, get out of here. No. I can't stop. Get out of yeah, here. I she see. tries. <laughs> so I just, you know, you think about something enough and this is the one thing with Brenny, you have so much time to think. Um, I was like, there has to be some way to create this. This is not, you know, it's an object. So I fortunately have a lot of amazing, smart people in my life. And um, so Abriel's father, he's a very smart individual. He happened to own a 3D printer. So I sent him a picture of the tile and he printed out like 16 plastic prototypes of the tile. So then I took said prototypes to my brother-in-law, Nathan, him and his wife, Gwen, have an Etsy business, shout out Dove Key Finch. Um, and they create um, concrete products and molds for concrete products. Um, and so um, he showed me how to um, take those prototypes and we made a mold out of it. He showed me how to make molds. Mm -hmm. um, so I made like, I don't know, five or six molds then. So then over, I don't know, like a month, two months time, I, every night I go to the basement, put some Netflix on, mix my concrete, pour it into the molds, vibrate it. If the temperature and everything elements were right by the next evening, I could take them out of the molds, let them cure for like a month and do it all over again. Um, I don't know, I think I made like 2000 tiles. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, it ended up being it was a lot. too many. It ended up being too many. We, we didn't calculate it correctly, but hey, now I have a whole bin now of extras. Extra. Yes, so then I had all my tiles and then, um, yeah, the fun part of putting them on the wall. Um, yeah, and it all turned out. It was like anyone could do it. it just like just following yeah. the steps and doing over and over again, which is, again, the same as running. Just same as running. Same. Yeah. <laughs> just doing the same thing over and over again. It wasn't it didn't take any intelligence, just a lot of Netflix. That's pretty impressive though. Cause that's right? like commitment uh, to see that, see it through the process of getting the tile, like designing it, figuring out how to get the tile, but then to like every night go make tiles to have yeah. 2000 is pretty crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. like, again, I think it's a being excited about your goal. And once I realized it was going to work, that excitement just kind of like spurs you on and you're like, and also like the older you get, like time's going to pass anyway. Like I, didn't I might as well do something productive. Well do something. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, and then it's cool when you have your, you know, your builder, Jake, like you can be like, I made this, like, I don't know. Yeah. It connects you to your home more. There's a story. And then it's like, why well, do something sometimes like quick just to have it done to be like, okay, I'm done. And then you're kind of annoyed and irritated by the next 10 years where if you just would have taken some extra time to do it the way you wanted you yeah. never, you know, you'd love it then the next 10 years, yeah. 20 years. That's I, don't true. Know. I knew Jake would love that story. I knew he'd want to talk with us women about running, but I was like, <laughs> as a builder, he'll, he's going to appreciate this jam right here. <laughs> I will say it's fine cabinetry. I cannot do. So anyone that can like do fine carpentry and trim work. Yeah. Oh, that's goals. Oh yeah. Jake. Now you did just put your floor down and they're downstairs. So Jake would appreciate that floor because he also does incredible, beautiful floors. Okay. He's very talented. This Jake's is about women. This, this is about women. Don't don't <laughs> don't hype me up, ladies. Don't hype me up. Hype me up ladies, later. <laughs> enough, ladies. Enough. Enough. I am impressed with the uh, the room you're in. I like the, oh, the wallpaper and the borders and stuff like that. Thanks again. I can only see spouse. the whole house. He doesn't care. <laughs> is this like okay so why is there no furniture in your in your living oh, room oh we gutted it we gutted it um we're oh. redoing the down so we're redoing the kitchen but because we had knocked the walls down a couple years ago it's all open so it's one square one open space so um 
therefore the whole thing is good we have floors now um and a oh, micro nice yeah yeah you sent me that picture yeah so hopefully in two weeks we will have cabinets cool so, i'm yeah. so excited and Crescinda has put up with a fridge that barely fits in a hole <laughs> for years and you go to open it and the fridge literally is like call gong call gong call gong call gong always and people are like oh and they'll like go look at it and she's like yeah it's like that <laughs> let's move on so all, after all these years it's like okay she's actually getting a new and like we're i'm thrilled yeah. it's so exciting yes yeah, so we kicked the rats out we got a new fridge all as well oh, all that's as awesome. well she's really thriving right now um they, yeah there's so many things i could say like brent has his down in the basement like they made a little man cave down there and even that is wallpapered with like deer and like nice. you know, all very fun, very exciting to the senses. Like it's it's very exciting. What's funny, Jake, is that you know Darren, and like Darren is like, you know, I put like one thing different on the wall, and he's like, Well, what's that? What's yeah. that? <laughs> and, he, and like we'll go to her to Kersinda's and she has like a huge velvet pink antique, like or anthropology couch. And I'm like, Do you like that couch? And he's like, this room looks really good. It all fits together, you know? And I'm like, oh, okay, all right. Can we like move I, on? Like, I trust Chelsea's style. Like, everything yeah. in her house works, and I like it. So yeah. it's like, she could pretty much do anything, and I'm going to be like, You're cool. a good husband. You're a good husband. Brent's like that, too. Brent yes. Brent's like that, too. Yeah. yeah. He lets me, he, like, he's a big hunter, and I took his deer head, and I decorated it with a flower crown and everything. And as much as Brent can come off as, like, you know, a man's man right um he doesn't even care like it, yeah. he is like shockingly just like whatever with the house stuff I don't have to he went away the other weekend and I he came back to the kitchen was gutted he doesn't I mean actually he's probably like sweet I don't have to do it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah he's very like I he's again a great supporter and home to corn yeah. he's a great supporter <laughs> yeah oh, that's awesome. yeah he is he, he he loves it he's like he I think he knows you know he's like that's my woman but he can't, he can't admit it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's get our songs up and going here. We're ready. Right. Now, Christina, you know, of course I had to tell Gemma, I was like, Christina going to be on the pod. And if one of her songs is not, I'm the man, <laughs> I'm going to be, that's I a whole wrote, story. Aloe black. I'm the man. Oh, <laughs> Jake. Okay. I, again, I'm so sorry about this. Then maybe we have time for Christina to just say why I'm laughing about that song. I do want to hear because I don't. I don't think it's that funny. I mean, it was an emotional moment for me. <laughs> no, I was running my first fifty k out in Colorado, so it was like a big deal. Like I was nervous. I had never done this distance. It was Colorado, so it was elevation I'd never dealt with. And um, towards like two thirds of the race, I had been running by myself for like two, I don't know, like two hours or something. Cause it was very solitary. It was like in the mountains and I hadn't seen anybody like another runner. And you just kind of, you're getting tired. You're getting in your head. And I guess I had my phone on shuffle and owl black, the man came on <laughs> and I started tearing up and joking. And I found it very motivational and inspirational. <laughs> And clearly, Melissa and Jenna thought, you know, this was hilarious. My, we could not get over this story. Literally, me and Jenna talked about this our whole time in Portugal when she told us. And even now, like, if Jenna goes on a run and she's like, and I, I twisted my ankle and I was like, oh my God, how am I going to get out of here? And I'm like, I'll tell you how you're going to get out of there. You're going to put I'm the man on and you're going to weep. And that's I'm the man, I'm, I'm the man, I'm the man. <laughs> <laughs> Just picturing like Crescinda, just like, really after this goal you know <laughs> how am i gonna reason this and then just crying and being like I'm the man, I'm the man. i can't get over it it's the best story You're welcome. it's so that good. Pretty good yeah so everybody put it on the list of Hello black i'm the man songs. and i am motivated i'm gonna run uh soon <laughs> i feel motivated i do feel motivated they just finished which our entire county was furious over except for me and darren and three other artists in town but they just finished a um trail a walk run trail around the entire dike in our town so you can go from the back of our house right here to the high school and it's right there it starts and it goes all the way over to pizza hut and all the way back Pizza Hut, if that gives you a nice understanding <laughs> of why the community might be upset. Um, 
And me and Darren walked it the other night. And I told him, I was like, this would be very good for me to get under my belt. Like that I can run a little bit more even by myself in town without being like around cars being like, Grr. like what's wrong? That girl running from mountain lion. No, it's exercise. It's fine. You know? So I'm excited. I feel like this was motivating. It did make me feel motivated to, to do it. It really did. Okay. Well, okay. So your song is the man. Oh, okay. Oh no. So I, I do write down, but only for, for your benefit. Cause that is not on my running playlist. <laughs> Um, but I thought I would pick put two songs that if I'm I'll have it on shuffle and they pop on, I'm not gonna lie, it might be cheesy, but like they get me going, they get me excited, okay, they get me happy. It. So I'm gonna go with Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell, Ain't No Mountain High Enough. Yeah, that's a um, good one. I mean, you can't help but feel pumped, right? I love that and song. And then uh Biggie Hypnotize. All right. We haven't had any Biggie yet. That's good. Oh, no, I'm ready for this. This is good yeah. stuff. No, I love those. Those are good. Okay, okay so mine is going to be, I never, I didn't know. I mean, I knew who, you know, Rufus the Soul is, but that song, he does Inner Bloom where it has like that weird sax at the end. That's the song I'm doing. I didn't. Even okay, R-U-F-U-S with the two dots over the U's and then D-U and then S-O-L. And it's called Inner Bloom. It's a lot of music. But then at the end, there's like, he does a little bit, but. At the end, there's like this weird, like techno y saxophone thing. And I was like, what the heck? But I like it. I like it. Do I think you should run to it? <laughs> so, Maybe not. Walk. <laughs> but walking is man. healthy too, we learned. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. Okay. Okay, right. Jakey. I'm going to do Acquiesce from Oasis because <laughs> still figuring out tickets. I'm a fan, but I don't like the bend over backwards thing like what like with the taylor swift tickets like we couldn't get over that people spent that amount of money on taylor yeah swift so i think there's just a level of like let's be real here sort of yeah so sort of. i'm not saying yeah like next year i might just be like, like a special anniversary next year like your 20th yeah. okay. next like, year's our 20th in september yeah so that could be that could be it really so acquiesce by oasis, oasis. let's do mystery by turnstile because we are still the unofficial mm -hmm. turnstile podcast we are we love turnstile yes and next week i'm seeing sturgill simpson <gasps> so, oh exciting let's do sturgill juanita okay love it those are good songs thanks for cinda started it off right too with one that jake loves already i'm a man aloe black <laughs> oh the next one <laughs> i know i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> Cut to Jake actually doing his next marathon, and me and Chris Cinder are there to support you. Yeah. We're gonna... in the crowd with Chelsea, and we just hold up a, a thing like they did in you know the movie. Yeah, yeah. but it's I'm the man, and yeah. you're just crying, and we're like, see, we told you it works. You could what probably, they... you could probably get him to show up. I'm sure he's not busy. What <laughs> if we like up? Uh, we increase his his downloads after this podcast. We oh yeah, right? so times. <laughs> He's like, wow! I went from twelve to twenty four downloads of my song. I'm the man. <laughs> he sends us all a signed CD. We're like, we don't even have a CD player out. What's the deal? Yeah, he's like, well, this out. was incredible. Oh, this is so much fun. This was fun. It was really fun. Thank you, Chrisenda. It was really a blast. Oh, thanks for having me. Thanks for asking. Yeah. My goal is before we record again to have said that I ran. That you, oh, just in general, period. <laughs> I haven't ran since the half marathon. Okay. I mean, but I feel like, like I said, when after I ran my first marathon, I was like, not that I wasn't yeah. running again, but I'm like, oh, I don't need to do this again. So I feel like you yeah. need like a downtime period. Like, okay. and I think that's okay. I will okay. caution against taking completely too much time off because then when you start up again, it's real hard. And okay. you're like, oh, oh I should at least ran like, two miles a week you know just yeah. like something okay. i did that one winter i took a whole winter off and then i never did it again because i was like that was stupid um oh, wow. so that's yeah. my goal i'm gonna run before our next record okay okay i will try to do that too jake we'll be on the same goal i'll run right. that the new trail i'll try to do that a couple times and then next week we'll do an update and then christina is forced to listen i will I, I do tell like her <laughs> I do love listening to podcasts, but 
if I have a, like somebody is willing to talk to me while I run on the phone, I will pick that over mm. a podcast. Yeah. I can see so, that. Yeah. yeah that's I get really in my head about like how, how long it's been, how far I've ran. It's really hard for me to like shut that down. Yeah. That's yeah. why actually I actually don't listen to music a ton when I run because it becomes too much like white noise and it's not motivating after a while. Mm. Um, so I might save music. I might make it, I make it special, like save it for the last couple miles. And then it's like, then it feels that's why she likes running with darren so much because he never be quiet (laughs) (laughs) i could see that i should just call darren no 100 percent. just go jake he's like and then you know what he said to me and i'm like no what what i did and that groundhog (laughs) came out from no it's the beavers it's the beavers yeah the beaver he the beaver family the beaver family handle it I'm like, Kristen, I apologize for that conversation that took four hours. And she's like, it's fine by me. I, my run is done. I've, t- I've time to get, yeah. Like, she got, she <laughs> got a new world record. Done. Bye. <laughs> All right. Anyway, this was fun. This was great, guys. It was so Thank you. fun. Thanks, Kristen. Thank you. Enjoy your afternoon. Thank you, too. Yes. Thank you, Kristen. Bye. All right. Love y'all. Bye. Yeah,